How does a simple act of concern echo in the halls of a royal palace? It's a question that's taken on a new resonance lately, as we've seen the Sussexes, Prince Harry and Meghan, extend an olive branch of support to King Charles III and the Princess of Wales. This comes amidst health challenges faced by these key figures in the monarchy and against a backdrop of speculated tensions within the royal family. Remember the allegations about conversations concerning the skin color of Archie, the Sussex's firstborn? Those allegations set the stage for a complex narrative, one that now includes this recent gesture of support. While it may seem like a small act, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's outreach is a significant one. It sends a clear message to the world, family ties endure, despite the physical and metaphorical miles that may separate us. It's a testament to their commitment to maintaining these connections, even as they navigate the intricacies of their own royal journey. This gesture, whether it's a heartfelt email or a simple phone call, possesses a certain weight. It's a tangible reminder of the enduring bonds of family, a beacon of unity amidst the complexities of royal life. In the grand theater of royal life, even a supportive email can wield the power of a dramatic soliloquy. The Sussex's olive branch, quiet yet resonant, continues to reverberate through the corridors of the palace, reminding us all of the delicate balance between personal relationships and public duties within the monarchy. What happens when the players in a royal game of chess are rearranged? That's the question that springs to mind when we consider the recent reshuffling within the royal household. The decision to revise the list of councillors of state is a move that has introduced new dynamics within the royal structure. In this Game of Thrones, Prince Harry and Prince Andrew find themselves excluded, while Princess Anne and Prince Edward have been given a seat at the table as councillors for life. What does this mean? Well, the councillors of state are those who step in to perform the king or queen's duties when they're unable to do so. This is not a symbolic position, but one of real responsibility. The exclusion of Prince Harry, who has stepped back from royal duties, and Prince Andrew, who has faced controversy, is a significant statement. It's a clear message about who the monarchy considers to be working royals, those who carry the responsibilities that come with their titles. And what about the inclusion of Princess Anne and Prince Edward? Their addition to the list reflects their steadfast commitment to the crown. It's a nod to their years of service and a clear indication of their integral role within the monarchy. But let's not forget, this isn't just about duties and roles, it's also about perception. How the public views the royal family is influenced by decisions like these, by ensuring that the councillors of state are those who have shown unwavering dedication to their roles, the monarchy is reinforcing a narrative of stability and continuity, even in times of change. So, while the Sussex's gesture of support and the health concerns within the family are at the forefront, the reshuffling of the royal chessboard is a subplot that shouldn't be overlooked. It's a narrative of adaptation, of a family navigating the delicate balance of personal connections and public duties. In the royal game of chess, each move subtly reshapes the board. And with these recent changes, we're seeing the monarchy position itself for the next phase of its age-old dance. In the intricate dance of royal relationships, what does the next step look like? As we've seen, the recent developments in the royal family have brought forward a fascinating interplay of personal and official matters. The Sussex's gesture of support, despite their physical distance from the monarchy, highlights the enduring familial bonds amidst the complexities of royal life. It's a testament to how personal connections can transcend public duties, even in the most intricate of dances. Simultaneously, the revision of the councillors of state list brings a shift within the royal structure. This decision subtly reshapes the framework of who's considered a working member of the royal family, revealing how the dance of royal duties continues to evolve with each generation. Amidst these changes, the health concerns for key members of the royal family remind us of the fragility of human life, even within the gilded halls of the monarchy. It's a poignant reminder that personal health and well-being remain paramount, even as the royal responsibilities continue their relentless march. In essence, the future of royal relationships and duties seems to be a balance of the personal and the public, the old and the new. It's a dance that the British monarchy has been performing for centuries, each generation bringing its unique steps to the floor. Each move a testament to the delicate interplay between family bonds and the weight of the crown. As the dance continues, the royal family steps into an ever-evolving future, 
each move a testament to the delicate balance between family bonds and the weight of the crown. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video. In the Grand Theatre of International Relations and Public Perception, a simple appearance can stir a tempest in a teapot. Enter stage right, Prince Harry and Meghan, the Sussexes, who have dared to step away from the conventional path of royal duty. Their latest act, an appearance at a film premiere in the heart of Jamaica. An event that, on the surface, might seem like a simple night out. But in the complex world of royal protocol and the Commonwealth's delicate dynamics, it's much more than meets the eye. This appearance, like every move they make, is watched, dissected, and interpreted by critics and enthusiasts alike. It's a dance on the world stage, where each step, each gesture, has the potential to ignite a fiery discourse, to challenge the traditional expectations of royal conduct. And so, under the glittering lights of the red carpet, the Sussexes stepped into a melee of scrutiny and interpretation. As the Sussexes graced the red carpet, the world watched, and the tapestry of reactions began to unravel. In the limelight, Prince Harry and Meghan's every move, every interaction, every sartorial choice was under the microscope. From the whisper of silk gowns to the clink of champagne glasses, every detail was scrutinized, analyzed, and often sensationalized. Their demeanor, a blend of royal elegance and Hollywood charm, drew a myriad of responses. Some saw it as a breath of fresh air, a defiance of the stiff upper lip associated with royal protocol. Others saw it as a deviation, a contentious disregard for centuries-old traditions, and oh, the narratives that were woven. The media, always eager for a juicy tale, spun stories from the threads of the Sussexes' appearance. The color of Meghan's dress, the laughter shared between the couple, the glances exchanged. Each was a thread, each was a story. The public, too, contributed to this colorful tapestry of reactions. Social media platforms buzzed with opinions, interpretations, and heated debates. Some hailed the Sussexes as pioneers, breaking away from the rigid boundaries of royalty. Others criticized them, accusing them of using their royal status to further personal agendas. Royal enthusiasts, those ardent followers of all things monarchy, were particularly vocal. Their reactions were as diverse as their numbers. Some lamented the perceived erosion of royal decorum, while others championed the Sussexes' pursuit of individuality and freedom. But amidst this whirlwind of reactions, a larger narrative began to emerge. The Sussexes, by choosing their path, were not just challenging royal norms, they were stirring the pot of international relations, shaking the foundations of public perception, and triggering a re-evaluation of what it means to be a royal in the 21st century. And thus, a simple film premiere became a stage for a fiery discourse on modern royalty and global affairs. Beneath the clamor and the claims, the broader picture of the evolving role of modern royalty and its intersection with global affairs comes into focus. Let's delve deeper into this intricate tapestry, where every thread tells a story of change. The Sussexes' appearance at the Jamaican film premiere, far from being a simple social engagement, becomes a mirror reflecting the changing dynamics of royal duties and global relations. Their every gesture, every sartorial choice, every interaction is scrutinized, analyzed, and woven into narratives that span the globe. But what does this scrutiny reveal? It reveals a royal couple who have dared to step away from the well-trodden path of traditional royal conduct. It reveals a couple who have chosen to exercise their individual agency to forge their own narrative, independent of the expectations and restrictions traditionally associated with their royal status. Their actions challenge the age-old notions of duty and diplomacy, of what it means to be a royal in the 21st century. They question the boundaries, the roles, the conventions that have, until now, defined the royal institution. And in doing so, they invite us to reassess our own perceptions of royalty, of duty, and of the relationship between public figures and the public they serve. This is not just about a prince and a duchess stepping onto a red carpet in Jamaica. It's about stepping into a new era of royal conduct, one that embraces change, individuality, and a broader engagement with the world. It's about the inevitable intersection of royal duties with global affairs, the intertwining of public perception with international relations. It's about the evolving role of modern royalty in a world that is rapidly changing, a world that demands adaptability, authenticity, and a willingness to challenge the status quo.
In the end, the Sussexes' appearance at the film premiere paints a vivid picture of the scrutiny and the sometimes bewildering interpretations that follow the footsteps of those who dare to tread a path less trodden by royal standards. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video. Have you ever wondered what's the latest in the ongoing controversy surrounding Prince Harry and Meghan Markle? Well, pull up a chair because we're about to dive right in. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have been making waves since their departure from royal duties, and the ripple effects are being felt throughout British society and politics. The recent book Endgame by Omid Scoby has added fuel to the fire. This critical portrayal of the British monarchy has sparked heated debates and not just over tea and crumpets. Meghan and Harry's actions have been viewed by some as a critique of the monarchy, and they've certainly ruffled a few royal feathers. But it's not just about royal protocol and palace intrigue. The controversy also touches on larger societal issues, like race and public image. And it's these aspects that make the situation so complex and fascinating. These events have led to an unprecedented proposal by Tory MP Bob Seeley. But what exactly is this proposal? So, what's this proposal we're talking about? Well, Bob Seeley, a Tory MP, is suggesting something quite radical. He's put forth a proposal for legislation that could potentially strip Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, of their royal titles. This isn't just a whimsical notion. Seeley is drawing from the pages of history, specifically World War I. During that tumultuous time, German nobles who were considered enemies had their British titles rescinded. Seeley is using this historical precedent to form his argument, his reasoning. If Harry and Meghan no longer wish to participate in the traditional roles of the royal family, then they should also relinquish the titles and privileges associated with it. Especially, Seeley argues, if they are perceived as undermining the monarchy. Now, the implications of this proposal are far-reaching. It not only brings into sharp focus the tension between the Sussexes and the royal family, but also the public discourse around race and the image of the monarchy. Remember, Harry and Meghan have built a brand that is somewhat independent of their titles. However, if these titles were to be removed based on allegations of racism, it could intensify the public scrutiny of the monarchy. This proposal and the ensuing controversy underscore the intricate dance between celebrity, politics and royal tradition in Britain today. As we can see, the Sussexes' actions and the responses to them are more than just tabloid fodder. But what does this controversy signify about the current state of the monarchy and its relationship with the public? The Sussex saga can be seen as a mirror reflecting broader societal and political undercurrents in the United Kingdom. In a sense, it is a modern tale of monarchy and celebrity, tradition and change, privilege and scrutiny. The monarchy, once untouchable, now finds itself under the public's microscope, its image questioned and its relevance continually debated. The Sussexes' departure from royal duties and subsequent establishment of an independent brand has stirred the pot of these ongoing discussions. Their candidness about their experiences within the palace walls, particularly around issues of race, has amplified the dialogue about diversity, inclusivity, and the monarchy's role in a rapidly changing society. The proposal by Bob Seeley to strip the Sussexes of their royal titles is not just about the Duke and Duchess themselves. It's a reflection of the tension between preserving tradition and embracing change, between public duty and personal freedom. If the Sussexes were to lose their titles, this could potentially intensify public scrutiny of the monarchy. It may be perceived as a punitive measure, a silencing of voices that dared to challenge the status quo. This could, in turn, trigger further debates about the monarchy's adaptability and its willingness to engage with difficult conversations. On the other hand, some may see it as a necessary step to protect the image of the monarchy, to draw a clear line between royal duties and personal pursuits. It could be seen as an assertion of the monarchy's independence from the influence of celebrity culture. Either way, the potential stripping of the Sussex's titles could have far-reaching implications, not just for Harry and Meghan, but also for the monarchy and its relationship with the public. This situation underscores the complex interplay of celebrity, politics and royal tradition in contemporary Britain. With every twist and turn in this royal drama, we are reminded of the delicate balance between the monarchy's need to preserve tradition and the public's desire for transparency and modernity. So where does this leave us? We've delved into the controversy surrounding Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the explosive revelations of Endgame, and Bob Seeley's radical proposal. 
We've seen how these events intertwine with broader societal and political tensions, shaping the public discourse around the monarchy. As we watch this royal drama unfold, we are reminded of the broader debates about the monarchy's role and relevance in modern society. Only time will tell how this controversy will ultimately play out. Have you ever wondered how the royal family adapts to changes in their ranks? A recent turn of events has necessitated just such a shift. Due to the health concerns of King Charles and the Princess of Wales, there's been a significant reorganization of duties within the royal family. A key part of this reshuffle involves Queen Camilla, Princess Anne and the Duchess of Edinburgh stepping up to take on more prominent roles. This adaptation isn't just about filling gaps, it's about a collective effort to ensure the monarchy's presence remains steadfast and visible, despite the circumstances. Queen Camilla, Princess Anne and the Duchess of Edinburgh, all seasoned royals, are stepping forward with grace and pragmatism. Their readiness to assume more central roles in the face of adversity speaks volumes about the royal family's resilience. This shift also highlights the depth and versatility of the royal family. Each member brings unique strengths and experiences to the table, contributing to the collective effort of maintaining the monarchy's engagements and responsibilities. It's a testament to the collaborative spirit that characterizes this institution. In essence, the royal family is demonstrating that it's more than a figurehead. It's a dynamic unit that can adapt and evolve in response to changing circumstances. This transition is a testament to the royal family's resilience and adaptability. As we delve deeper into the dynamics of this royal reshuffle, we'll see that it's not just about duty, it's about family, adaptability, and the enduring legacy of the monarchy. The royal family is not just about crowns and castles, it's about the strength and depth of its members. Let's delve deeper into the unique strengths and experiences of Queen Camilla, Princess Anne, and the Duchess of Edinburgh. Their readiness to step into more central roles is a testament to the unyielding spirit of the royal family. Queen Camilla, with her calming presence and dedication, is set to bring a renewed sense of warmth to the monarchy. Princess Anne, known for her no-nonsense approach and unwavering commitment to duty, will undoubtedly fortify the steadfastness of the royal family. And the Duchess of Edinburgh, Sophie, with her empathetic nature and ability to connect with people, will bring a touch of human warmth to the royal engagements. This shift in responsibilities is no mere reshuffle. It signifies the depth and dynamics of the royal family. It's about the adaptability of each member, their readiness to step up, and the collective strength that propels the monarchy forward. It's about the seamless integration of duty and family, and the resilience that enables the monarchy to weather any storm. Each member brings their unique qualities to the table, making the royal family not just a symbol of heritage and tradition, but also a beacon of resilience and adaptability. Their contribution ensures the monarchy's presence remains steadfast and visible, today and always. Each member's contribution ensures the monarchy's presence remains steadfast and visible. What does it mean to be a modern royal? Look no further than Prince William. Amidst the reshuffling of royal responsibilities, Prince William finds himself in a unique position. Balancing the needs of his family with the expectations of his royal role, he is a shining example of the modern royal, one who seamlessly juggles personal and public responsibilities. His situation highlights the personal side of royal life, which often remains unseen. It's not just about official engagements or public appearances, it involves very real, very human dilemmas. How do you ensure your children grow up with a sense of normalcy amidst the regal grandeur? How do you support a loved one during a health crisis, while also fulfilling your royal duties? It's a delicate balance, and Prince William navigates it with grace and poise. He is the embodiment of a modern royal adroitly prioritizing family, while also upholding his duties. This is what it means to be royal in today's world. Prince William embodies the modern royal prioritizing family while also upholding his duties. So, what can we glean from the recent changes within the royal family? We've seen a reshuffling of responsibilities, with Queen Camilla, Princess Anne, and the Duchess of Edinburgh stepping up to fill the gap. This showcases the adaptability of the monarchy, with each member leveraging their unique strengths and experiences in service to the crown. The situation also emphasizes the depth of the royal family, as senior royals seamlessly take on more prominent roles. 
It's a testament to the collaborative spirit and resilience that exists within the monarchy. Moreover, we've glimpsed the evolving nature of royal duties, as personified by Prince William. As he balances family life with royal obligations, we see how personal and public responsibilities intersect more visibly in the modern royal life. As the royal family navigates these changes, they continue to demonstrate their commitment to duty, family, and the enduring legacy of the monarchy. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video. Have you ever wondered how the British royal family communicates amongst themselves during times of crisis? Consider the recent news regarding King Charles III's health. A situation that would typically be private in most families is a matter of public concern for the royals. But even more intriguing is the alleged communication gap between Buckingham Palace and the prince who now calls North America home, Prince Harry. When the palace made efforts to inform all senior royals of the king's condition, details surrounding the timing and methods of their communication to Prince Harry remained elusive. This sparks a fascinating conversation about the efficiency and adequacy of communication within the world's most famous family. In a digital age where we can instantaneously connect with someone halfway around the globe, how is it possible for there to be a communication breakdown within the royal family? Adding to this intricate narrative is the suggestion from a royal commentator that Prince Harry should reach out to his father and brother. This expectation is loaded with the complexities of family dynamics, public image, and the history that Prince Harry shares with his kin, particularly in the wake of his candid memoir, Spare. This situation highlights the delicate balance the royal family must maintain between their public duties and private lives. But let's remember, the choice to respond publicly or privately, or not at all, is deeply personal for Prince Harry. We must question, is it our place, as the public, to scrutinize his decision? So we find ourselves as spectators of a narrative that speaks volumes about the challenges of modern royal life. It's not just about the enduring fascination with a family that has long held the world's attention. It's an exploration of the same issues that ordinary families grapple with. Communication, privacy, and familial relationships, albeit under a magnifying glass of public scrutiny. As we dive deeper into this narrative, we realize that the royal family, despite their unique status, grapple with the same issues that ordinary families do. Now let's delve into the implications of Prince Harry's geographical distance from the rest of the royal family. As we navigate this royal labyrinth, Prince Harry stands out as a distinct figure, separated not only by the vast expanse of the Atlantic, but also by a complex web of familial ties and unties. His relationship with the royals, particularly after the explosive revelations in his memoir, Spare, has been a subject of intense public scrutiny. As the youngest son of Prince Charles, the expectation for him to bridge this emotional and geographical divide and reach out to his father and brother is as palpable as it is contentious. The complexity of this expectation, however, is not lost. It's akin to walking a tightrope over a sea of public opinion, where a slight misstep could stir a tempest. If he reaches out privately, he risks being accused of shying away from public acknowledgement. If he does so publicly, he opens himself to criticism of exploiting a family matter for public sympathy. And if he chooses to stay silent, well, the court of public opinion is rarely kind to perceived indifference. Yet what makes this situation truly fascinating is how it mirrors the broader struggle between modernity and tradition. Prince Harry's decision to step back from royal duties, relocate overseas, and express his personal struggles publicly was a decidedly modern move, but one that clashed with the royal family's traditional stoicism. In this context, his response to his father's health concerns becomes more than just a personal decision. It becomes a statement, a reflection of his journey as a modern royal navigating the choppy waters of tradition. Prince Harry's situation is a stark reminder of the fine line the royal family must walk between their public duties and private lives. It is a balancing act performed on a global stage, with the world eagerly watching for the next act in this riveting royal drama. Despite these challenges, why do we remain captivated by the British royal family? The answer lies in their enduring allure. They are more than just a family, they are a living symbol of tradition and continuity. Their narratives, filled with the complexities of human relationships, are a testament to their resilience and adaptability in the face of change. They are a constant in an ever-evolving world, a touchstone of stability amid the chaos of our own lives. Each member of the royal family, from the queen to the youngest prince, plays a role in this grand narrative. 
Each decision they make, each step they take, is watched with anticipation, dissecting the potential implications for the future of the monarchy. Indeed, the British royal family continues to captivate us, not despite their challenges, but perhaps because of them, offering a fascinating blend of tradition, modernity, and human drama. Their story is far from over, and we remain eager spectators, awaiting the next enthralling chapter. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video. Ever wondered how Princess Kate, the Princess of Wales, will manage her royal duties while prioritizing her health and recovery? We find ourselves asking this question as the Princess convalesces at Adelaide Cottage following an abdominal surgery. Known for her active involvement and dedication, Princess Kate faces a new challenge, one that requires balancing her health with the responsibilities of royal life. Yet, she plans to continue her work, albeit in a more subdued capacity. This isn't about her putting on a brave face, it's about her unwavering commitment to her roles and responsibilities, even when personal health struggles come knocking on the door. It's a balancing act, a delicate dance between duty and self-care, between public expectation and personal well-being. Indeed, the princess's dedication to duty, even in times of personal health challenges, is truly commendable. But what about the rest of the royal family? How are they adjusting to this change? The answer is, with grace and adaptability. Prince William, for instance, has stepped up to the plate, taking on additional responsibilities to accommodate Princess Kate's recovery period. From the school runs for their children to an increased role in royal duties, the prince is displaying a commendable sense of duty and prioritization of family. This shift in responsibilities isn't just about picking up the slack, it's a testament to the royal family's adaptability, their capacity to adjust to changing circumstances while maintaining the balance between their public roles and private lives. It's about stepping in when needed, about ensuring that the wheels of the royal household continue to turn smoothly, even when one of its key members needs to take a step back. This adaptability is not just a trait, it's a necessity, a skill honed over generations of royal duty. It's what keeps the monarchy relevant and resilient in the face of change. Adaptable and supportive, the royal family exemplifies the balance between public duty and private life. You might be curious, what happens to the charities and initiatives that Princess Kate passionately supports during her convalescence? Well, it's a testament to her dedication that even during her recovery, her involvement with such causes is expected to continue, albeit at a somewhat slower pace. Consider the Shaping Us campaign, an initiative deeply close to her heart, focused on the importance of early childhood. It's not just about the figurehead, it's about the cause, the mission, and the impact. And Princess Kate's commitment to this, even in her physical absence, is nothing short of admirable. But she's not alone in this. Behind the scenes, her team, along with the staff at Kensington Palace, are reportedly making every effort to ensure that her work, her vision, continues to progress. It's like a well-oiled machine that keeps running even when the engineer needs to take a break. And that's the beauty of dedication, isn't it? It's not just about being present, it's about setting things in motion that continue to move, to grow, to make a difference. Even in her absence, Princess Kate's passion for her causes continues to make a difference. This situation also provides us with a glimpse into the inner workings of Kensington Palace. But what does it reveal? Well, it paints a picture of a royal household in transition. The palace has been without a private secretary for over a year. This role traditionally is the linchpin in managing the day-to-day -day operations of the royal household. On top of that, there's been a delay in appointing a new chief executive to lead the team. These vacancies point to a possible period of disorganization within the palace, yet they also underscore the complexity of managing a royal household. It's not just about overseeing staff or handling logistics, it's about balancing the demands of public duty with the needs of a family. It's about maintaining the dignity and prestige of the monarchy while adapting to changing circumstances. And let's not forget the expectations, from the public, the media, even from within the royal family itself. It's a delicate dance, one that requires finesse, diplomacy, and a keen understanding of tradition and protocol. So, as we consider Princess Kate's convalescence and its impact, we also get a peek behind the royal curtain. It's a fascinating glimpse into the challenges and intricacies of running one of the world's most famous households. Indeed, the palace's operations are under scrutiny as they navigate this period of transition. 
In conclusion, what does all this mean for Princess Kate and the royal family? This situation, while challenging, offers a unique insight into the resilience and commitment of Princess Kate. Despite her health setback, she continues to prioritize her royal duties and the causes she holds dear, albeit in a reduced capacity. This speaks volumes about her dedication and resolve. At the same time, we witness the adaptability of the royal family. Prince William stepping up to take on additional responsibilities is a testament to their supportive nature and their ability to maintain a balance between public duty and private life. This period is not only a test of Princess Kate's resilience, but also a reflection of the adaptability and supportive nature of the royal family. They are navigating the complexities of public life and personal health matters, all while under the watchful eyes of the world. Through it all, Princess Kate's commitment and the royal family's adaptability shine through, offering us a glimpse into the complex world of royal duties and personal health matters. Stay tuned for the next Majesty Moments video. Have you ever pondered the complexities that lurk beneath the polished exterior of the British royal family? The latest chapter in this ongoing saga, as depicted in Omid Scobie's Endgame, certainly adds another layer of intrigue. It shines a light on the alleged involvement of Princess Anne in the decision to evict the Sussexes from Frogmore Cottage. The decision, seemingly driven by a desire to uphold certain standards within the royal family, hints at the intricate dynamics within this venerable institution. This move underscores the challenges the monarchy faces in adapting to modern expectations and familial complications. It raises pertinent questions. How do these actions reflect on the monarchy as an institution? What does this tell us about the dilemmas faced by modern royal families in balancing tradition and personal relationships? As we dive deeper into the royal narrative, it becomes clear that the monarchy is a complex web of tradition, protocol, and personal relationships. Opening. What do the actions of the royal family reveal about the monarchy as an institution? Let's delve into this by looking at the contrast between the treatment of Prince Harry and Prince Andrew. Omid Scobie's book, Endgame, gives us a glimpse into the intriguing dynamics within the royal family. It suggests that the family isn't a monolith, but rather a collection of individuals with their unique perspectives, each trying to navigate the choppy waters of tradition and modernity. Prince Harry and Meghan chose to step back from their senior royal duties, seeking a different path. In response, they were asked to vacate Frogmore Cottage, their royal residence. On the other hand, we have Prince Andrew, who, despite facing considerable public scandal, continues to reside in the Royal Lodge. This discrepancy in treatment raises questions about the consistency of royal standards. Are these standards applied uniformly, or are they subject to the whims and fancies of individual family members? It's a puzzle that adds another layer of complexity to the narrative. The monarchy, in its essence, is an institution that thrives on tradition and protocol. It's a system built on centuries of customs and conventions. But in the face of modern realities and expectations, it seems to be grappling with challenges. The Sussex's eviction from Frogmore Cottage could be seen as an attempt to uphold these traditions, a show of strength, or perhaps a struggle to adapt to the changing times. Moreover, the differing viewpoints within the family further complicate matters. Some members seem to take a firm stand on maintaining royal standards, while others express concern for individual well-being. This internal conflict mirrors broader societal debates about tradition versus personal considerations. Closing, the question then arises, is the monarchy adapting or struggling with the modern expectations and familial complexities? As the royal saga continues to unfold, it provides us with a fascinating lens to examine these ever-evolving dynamics. It's a delicate balance indeed, balancing tradition with personal needs and choices, all under the watchful eyes of the public and media. Within the family, there exist differing viewpoints, but what do these contrasts tell us? In the heart of it all, Prince Edward's reported unease concerning the decision involving Prince Harry's mental health comes to light. It is interesting to see how this unease, this empathy, sets him apart. Picture this, a family member expressing concern for another's well-being, a scene that could take place in any household around the world. Yet, in the grand tapestry of royal tradition, this concern takes on a different hue. It becomes a symbol of the modern approach to family matters, one that considers personal needs and emotions. 
It's like a mirror reflecting broader societal debates about tradition versus personal considerations. Should we uphold tradition at all costs, or should we be more considerate of individual circumstances? This conundrum is not unique to the royals, it's a question that echoes in many corners of society. Indeed, the royal family, like any other, is a mix of differing perspectives and approaches. So, what does this latest chapter in the royal saga reveal? It's a complex tapestry woven with threads of tradition, personal needs, and the ever-evolving expectations of the public. Princess Anne's reported advice to King Charles to evict the Sussexes from Frogmore Cottage highlights the firm stance within the family towards those who step back from their senior royal duties. This decision, while maintaining protocol, reflects the challenges the monarchy faces in adapting to modern expectations. However, the contrasting treatment of Prince Harry and Prince Andrew raises questions about the consistency of these standards. Furthermore, Prince Edward's reported concern for Prince Harry's mental health suggests a more empathetic, modern approach to family matters. It's a delicate balance, isn't it? Upholding tradition while acknowledging personal considerations, all under the scrutiny of the public and media. As we continue to observe the unfolding drama of the British royal family, we are reminded of the delicate balance they must maintain, all under the watchful eye of the public and media. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the closed doors of the royal household during a family crisis? As the Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, convalesces in the London clinic, the tale of Prince William's frequent visits unravels. The prince, displaying a potent mix of royal duty and familial commitment, has been seen departing from the clinic, juggling his responsibilities as a father of three and a devoted husband. His dedication to his family is admirable, no doubt, yet it does invite a certain level of curiosity. Where was the prince in the immediate aftermath of the princess's surgery? Was he there, a comforting presence during those critical moments, or did he manage to slip past the ever-watchful media? As we delve deeper into the intricacies of this royal narrative, we realize that Prince William's actions raise questions about his presence during the crucial moments, questions that may remain unanswered. Now let's turn our attention to the Middleton family, notably absent during this critical period. The bond between Kate and her mother, Carol Middleton, is a well-documented tale of love and mutual respect. Carol has often been described as a rock in Kate's life, a constant source of support and advice. Therefore, one would naturally expect Carol to be a comforting presence at her daughter's side during this time of convalescence. Yet, this has not been the case. The Middleton family, including Carol, has been conspicuously absent from the scene. The lack of any photographic evidence or credible reports of Middleton visits to the London clinic adds a layer of mystery to the unfolding story. Could it be a deliberate decision to avoid the media glare, or is there more than meets the eye? The absence of the Middletons adds another layer of intrigue to this royal narrative. Now onto a topic that never fails to captivate the public, the royal residences. There's something about the grandeur and mystery of where the royals rest their heads that fascinates us all. In this instance, the Princess of Wales, Kate, is recuperating not within the majestic stone walls of Windsor Castle, but at Adelaide Cottage. Nestled within the sprawling Royal Windsor Estate, this charmingly quaint yet undeniably luxurious abode is where Kate is currently calling home. Adelaide Cottage, with its rich history and lush surroundings, offers a tranquil environment for recovery. It's a testament to the balance the royal family seeks to maintain between public duty and private life. This choice of location, away from the imposing grandiosity of Windsor Castle, is a subtle reminder of their need for privacy during personal moments. The public's keen interest in the royal lifestyle and personal spaces continues to be a major part of the royal narrative. As we near the end of our tale, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. The tale of the Princess of Wales's convalescence has been a journey of discovery, hasn't it? We've explored the nuances, the mystery, and the fascination that surround the royal family and the public's unending appetite for details about their private life. We began with Prince William's visits to the London Clinic his devotion to his wife, his dedication as a father to their three children, and his balancing act in the face of such a critical situation, all speak volumes about his character. Yet, the timing of his visits has left us pondering, hasn't it? Was he there during the critical moments, or did he manage to slip away from the ever-watchful media? Then we delved into the conspicuous absence of the Middleton family, particularly Carol Middleton. 
The strong bond between Kate and her mother is well known, so Carol's absence during this crucial time has certainly stirred the pot of speculation. The lack of photographic evidence of any Middleton visits has added a layer of mystery to this unfolding story. We also navigated the public's fascination with the royal residences. The clarification that the Princess of Wales will be recuperating at Adelaide Cottage, rather than Windsor Castle, reveals the public's keen interest in the royal lifestyle and their personal spaces. In essence, this tale of the princess's recovery is a vivid depiction of the constant public scrutiny faced by the monarchy. The dynamics of royal family visits, the involvement of extended family members, and the public's fascination with royal residences are all threads woven into this intricate narrative. As the royal narrative continues to captivate and intrigue, we wish the princess a swift and thorough recovery. Ah, the captivating saga of the Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, never fails to ensnare our attention. The fascinating life of royalty, with its meticulously scrutinized moments and keenly felt absences, is a narrative that keeps us all engrossed. In the latest chapter of this royal tale, we find Kate battling an ailment, one shrouded in a veil of mystery, which necessitates a lengthier convalescence than initially projected. The Kensington Palace, in an unexpected turn, forecasts a hospital stay of approximately 10 to 14 days, followed by rest at Adelaide Cottage until at least Easter. Intriguingly, this timeline aligns with the school holidays of the young royals, a time typically reserved for family, away from the glare of public scrutiny. The life of a royal, particularly one as cherished as Kate, is a riveting tale indeed. The Princess of Wales, unlike some of her more industrious relatives, has etched her mark in a unique niche within the royal framework. Kate's role in the royal family has been a fascinating blend of tradition and modernity. She has been particularly active in early years initiatives, an area where she has made a significant impact. Kate's focus on the development of children in their earliest years has been both passionate and persistent. She's been instrumental in initiatives like a Royal Foundation for the Early Years, which aims to raise awareness of the importance of early childhood development. Her influence in this field has been a game changer, bringing a fresh perspective to the royal family's philanthropic endeavors. However, with Kate's current convalescence, these projects continue, albeit without her direct involvement. Her absence from the public eye has inevitably shifted the dynamics. These initiatives, once amplified by the princess's presence and charisma, now progress quietly, somewhat missing the spark that Kate's involvement used to bring. This situation underscores the unique and irreplaceable role Kate plays in these early years initiatives. Her commitment, her passion, and her ability to connect with people on a deeply personal level have been key to the success of these projects. Without her, the initiatives continue, but the absence of her personal touch is keenly felt. Kate's irreplaceable role in these early years initiatives is undoubtedly missed. Her return post-recovery is eagerly anticipated, not just by the royal family, but by the countless lives she's touched through her work. With several engagements and ceremonies missed, one cannot help but ponder the impact of Kate's absence. From international tours to the glitz and glamour of the BAFTA ceremony, the Princess of Wales' usual presence has been notably vacant. Yet the royal machine continues to turn, raising questions about the true extent of Kate's role within this intricate framework. Her absence, intriguingly, has also coincided with a period traditionally reserved for family time, away from the public eye. This has led to speculation about the nature of Kate's convalescence and the potential for a strategic, albeit unintentional, retreat from the public sphere. However, these conjectures only serve to fuel the fire of intrigue surrounding the princess's recovery. The Trooping the Colour, in June, a significant event in the royal calendar, looms on the horizon. The expectation of Kate's presence at this grand spectacle is strong, and her potential absence could send ripples through the royal narrative. Yet, it's not merely the missed engagements that draw attention. It's the possible narrative emerging around the substance of Kate's royal duties. Her focus on early years initiatives, while commendable, has been a marked departure from the more traditional roles within the monarchy. The princess's role in the public sphere, particularly after an extended absence, is certainly a subject of keen interest. As we await her return, we can only wonder whether this period of absence will lead to a re-evaluation of her role within the royal family, or simply reaffirm the unique niche she has carved for herself. 
The saga of the Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, is indeed a tale of intrigue and fascination. As we've delved into today, Kate's unexpected health saga has led to a lengthy convalescence, creating a noticeable absence in the realm of royal engagements. This has particularly been felt in her cherished early years projects, where her influence and personal touch are irreplaceable. As we've explored, the royal family is adapting, ensuring the continuation of these initiatives, albeit without the public-facing aspect that Kate's presence brings. Yet the impact of her absence and the anticipation of her return with a bang have left us pondering the ongoing narrative surrounding her role within the monarchy. Intriguingly, the substance and impact of her royal duties are now under the microscope, leading us to speculate about the potential re-evaluation of her role upon her return. While we await Kate's swift recovery and return, one can only speculate about the renewed focus on engagements of substantive impact upon her return. Royal life indeed is never devoid of drama and speculation. What happens when a duke, seventh richest person in Britain, decides to tie the knot? As we immerse ourselves in the world of British high society, we encounter the enthralling announcement of the Duke of Westminster, Hugh Grosvenor's wedding. This is no ordinary wedding, mind you. The groom, a close friend of Princes William and Harry, is not only a duke, but also the godfather to Prince George and Prince Archie. The bride, a person of charm and grace, matches the duke's stature with her own impressive pedigree. Their relationship, steeped in the traditions and expectations of the British aristocracy, has caught the attention of royal enthusiasts and socialites alike. This monumental event not only signifies the union of two individuals, but also reverberates through the royal circle, marking a significant moment in British high society. But if you think this wedding is just about two young people in love, you're mistaken. There's more to this story. Now imagine the shock when it was reported that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, were not on the guest list. Yes, you heard it right. The Duke of Westminster, Hugh Grosvenor, a close family friend and godfather to both Prince George and Prince Archie, chose not to extend an invitation to the Sussexes for his wedding in June 2024. A decision that has been seen by many as a significant snub. Historically, the Grosvenor and Sussex families have enjoyed close ties. The Duke of Westminster and Prince Harry, in particular, share a bond that dates back to their childhood. They've been through school together, played polo together, and have been there for each other in times of joy and sorrow. So it's not just a matter of royal protocol, it's about personal relationships too. This exclusion is perceived as a reflection of the strained relations between the Sussexes and the British royal family, a strain exacerbated by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's public criticisms of the royal institution. The decision seems to underline the Duke of Westminster's alignment with the traditional values of the royal family and the aristocracy over his personal friendship with the Sussexes. So what could possibly lead to such a decision? The answer lies in the complex dynamics of royal relationships, societal expectations, and public image. And this decision, it seems, is more than just about a wedding guest list. It's a statement, a message, and a sign of the times. The Sussexes' exclusion from the wedding guest list isn't just about missing out on a party. It's a message, loud and clear. It's a statement that resonates far beyond the palace walls, echoing through the corridors of power and privilege in British society. The decision to exclude Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, from Hugh Grosvenor's wedding, could be seen as a response to their public criticisms of the royal family. This is more than just a personal matter. It reflects a deep-seated tension within the aristocracy and the royal family. Their outspokenness, though applauded by many for its courage and honesty, seems to have led to a distancing, a realignment of loyalties within the circles they once moved in. The Sussexes' decision to step away from royal duties and their subsequent public revelations have not been without consequences. The ramifications are evident, not only in their strained familial ties, but also in their social connections within the British aristocracy. And what of the potential roles of the Wales family members in Grosvenor's wedding? Their prominence in the proceedings could further underscore the Sussexes' estrangement from royal circles. The message seems clear. Loyalty to the monarchy and adherence to its traditional values still hold sway among the British aristocracy. The exclusion of the Sussexes is a significant statement, a reflection of the dynamics within the British royal family and the aristocracy. It's a sign of the times, a symbol of the shifting sands within the monarchy, 
and a poignant reminder of the power of tradition in shaping the narrative of the British elite. The Duke of Westminster's decision has stirred up quite a reaction, hasn't it? The British public and royal watchers worldwide have been abuzz with opinions. Many have taken to social media to voice their support for the Duke's decision, applauding his loyalty to the monarchy and the preservation of traditional values. On the flip side, there are those who criticize the move, viewing it as another instance of the royal family ostracizing Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. They argue that it's a missed opportunity for reconciliation and unity within the royal family. Meanwhile, the Sussexes have maintained a dignified silence, choosing not to comment publicly on the perceived snub. This stoic response could be seen as a testament to their commitment to forging their own path, separate from the traditional royal norms. In the end, it's clear that the dynamics within the British royal family can have far-reaching implications, as we've seen in this episode.